logic is staggering. Um, they want to uh, dim the sun to forestall global warming. So they want to put all these particulates, Bill Gates, you know, all these particulates into the air and dim the sun. And at the same time, they're in this mad suicide mission to build as many solar panels as they can. <laughs> what are you going to do with solar panels if you dim the sun? But, you know, logic uh, doesn't matter, right? It's just, uh, it doesn't have to make sense because they're in charge. They have the control. Isn't that ironic? And then also at the same time, there's a big dam removal project going on um, across the entire world. Hydrological dams are being removed um, to rewild um, the world. Uh, I just we just lost five hydrological dams on the Klamath River between California and Oregon, where I live. And there's so many reasons why this is a bad idea, you know. But they're they're pulling these things up. And these, this is the one and only green energy that actually makes sense. And we're losing these things. And it's all goes back to Agenda 2030, where people are not going to have electricity or, or there's zones that are not livable anymore because they're too fire prone or too hurricane prone or in flood zones or whatever. And people are going to be pushed out of their land and into smart cities. I just want to say, rest in peace, Chimney Rock, North Carolina. Chimney uh -huh. Rock will not be being rebuilt. That's really sad. And for people that, that do not know, Asheville, North Carolina, that got so many floods, so much flooding from Hurricane Helene and so much loss of life and loss of property and damaged damages galore. This is a town at over 2,100 feet above sea level, hundreds of miles, 300 miles from the ocean. Um, people on the ground who have dealt with hurricanes before, they had no idea something like this was coming. They'd never seen anything like this before. The um, hockey team in North Carolina is called the Hurricanes. These people are very privy to it, but it's only a coastal thing. Hurricanes pull moisture off the ocean and come and dump it on the coastal regions. The coastal regions were not impacted, but the mountain community was basically wiped off the map, and it just happened to be rich in lithium and quartz, and everyone and is asking big questions. Also, what worth mentioning is we're going into a U.S. election, and North Carolina and Georgia were devastated by these. Mm -hmm. And these are swing states. I looked it up. These are 50-50 swing states that could go either way. And Marjorie Green Taylor, Congresswoman out of Georgia, she came out publicly and said, these hurricanes are engineered, red states are being attacked, and Joe Biden had to come out and do damage control. And he literally, in his garbled um, teleprompter, hardly being able to read um, state, he says, I'm not controlling the weather. How could I do that? But he even said it. Like, if he's going to come out and say it, it's got to make people question, you know, what a strange thing for someone to say, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 16 um, electoral college votes in both of those states. Those are essential on the path to 270. And as you say, they are traditional, they're swing states, but they, um, uh, they're, they're so important for either the Democrats or the Republicans. You got to win those two and then Pennsylvania. Um, okay. So let's get to that timeline. That's, this is so important when this all really began. And as you say, in Frankenstein's the movie, uh, the first one, you go right back to 1920. So um, just give us the, give us the, the timeline. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And Frankenstein's it starts in 1920 because that's when there's military stock footage that I was able to use and literally put their own foot in their mouth with their with their own footage of them sharpening their tools and doing the research on how to manipulate the weather. Had I been able to find footage from the 1800s, that would have gone in. So going all the way back to 1891, there's a patent by the US government for a method of producing rainfall. So for people that don't know, seeding clouds and seeding rain was very common knowledge decades ago. But now it's not because it's being weaponized and people want you to think it's conspiracy theory, but it's really not. It was very much common knowledge back in the day. I reckon I recommend people search online for the article titled 175 Patents Proving Geoengineering and Weather Control. If you take a gander at that and you start to sink your teeth into the fact that there's all these patents that exist, people don't just make patents for no reason. They make patents because the technology is created and they don't want it to get in the wrong hands and they want to be the owners of such said technology. So it all really began to ramp up in 1962 when Lyndon B. Johnson, just one year before the JFK assassination, okay, 
Lyndon B. Johnson gives a speech at Southwest Texas State University to the alumni, and he says in this speech, control the weather, control the world, and he's grinding his teeth during it. And that clip of him saying that is in my film, Frank and Skies, so look out for that. And then in that same year, 1962, when LBJ gives that speech, there's a project that comes out through the U.S. military industrial complex called Project Storm Fury, mm -hmm. making storms furious, weaponizing storms. Project Storm Fury is a project to weaponize hurricanes, and it lasted till 1983, a 21-year project where they learned how to and um, specialize themselves in hurricane weaponization. So for people to think that this is just completely asinine, it's, it's, it's right there written in plain sight. In 1967, Project Popeye, a lot of people know about this one, they flood mm. the Ho Chi Minh Trail in Vietnam, weaponizing the weather publicly, and the United Nations even came together and voted unanimously to ban weather engineering as a weather warfare technique because it's going to impact people downstream, upstream, neighboring countries, and you're going to have all-out chaos if you start weaponizing the weather like that. Fast forward all the way to 1999. Were you going to say something? Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm listening. I'm, I, when, you're, when you're done, I want to add something that uh, my lovely bride, my executive producer, the mighty Aphrodite, just sent me. I want to uh, get your take on this as well, but keep going. Sorry to interrupt. No, terrific. And I'm jumping forward because there's so many things in between. Mm. I mean, a lot of patents I could talk a lot. But fast forward to 1999, and the Heart Project first began operations in Alaska using atmospheric electrification to steer weather patterns. And like I said earlier, this eventually evolved into Nexrad and Doppler systems, which are scattered all across the world. And look, look these things up. There's probably a Nexrad station near you. I live in Ashland, Oregon, on the Oregon-California border. And on Mount Ashland, it's the biggest mountain in the area. And there is a big $20 million golf ball, next red uh, storm predictor, creator, steerer, weather modifier on our Mount Ashland hillside. In 2003, there's a patent that came out for hurricane and tornado control and steering. Okay, so this is just, this is just fact. 2009, Mr. Bill Gates and Microsoft, they came out with a patent to control hurricanes, and specifically this patent has the ability to halt and stop and quell a hurricane. So this is 2009, and I liken this to any corporation that finds a competitor, such as the automotive industry, someone comes out with a new engine that runs on steam or something. They'll go and, and, and to that inventor, give them millions of dollars and to get that patent and literally sweep it under the rug and shelve it, and you'll never see it because they want to keep their fossil fuels, you know, predominant. Happens in all of the industries, you name it, um, Silicon Valley, all that sort of stuff. 2016, scientists actually created a Category 5 hurricane in a laboratory. So to say that hurricanes cannot be created, and they're creating them in a laboratory in 2016, I mean, let's just look at the facts here. 2019, a patent for propagating sound through bodies of water to generate direct wind for the purpose of moderating and affecting weather patterns. This is really fascinating because I've looked into this and there's old world tech technology like out of Tartarian Empire and stuff like that where church bells were used. And there's a whole church bell conspiracy like the Liberty Bell. They say it was cracked because they're so excited ringing it for liberty and actually these old giant bells were resonant frequency healing devices and also... I hear that they would ring these bells to bang up hurricanes and storms as they approached because the sound frequency is that powerful. And this 2019 patent to propagate sound through bodies of water to influence storms, it's an actual thing. And then also worth mentioning is a US Air Force document that was authored a good uh, couple decades ago, but it's titled Owning the Weather by 2025. And for those that don't know, it's 2024 now, and it seems like that they are well on their way to owning the weather. Yeah, they called it a weather a, for, a force multiplier, which is a military term. How to gain um, exactly. the upper hand in a military uh, confrontation using the weather. Uh, and also, um, it seems to me back in 2008 during the Beijing uh, Olympics and the Summer Games, they, it was all over the news, they talked about how they used silver iodide to prevent um, the rain during the opening ceremonies. So they were bragging about that. Now, 
Uh, here's the thing I wanted to share with you that the mighty Aphrodite uh, sent me. And if you'll indulge me, I'll just read this a little bit. Um, I'm not sure the the publication, but it's by someone named Meg Mar Marquart. Uh, the title is Benchmarks, October 13th, 1947, A Disaster with Project Cirrus, as in Cirrus Clouds. Um, it begins, two days after clipping Cuba and Florida, a hurricane was drifting out into the Atlantic. All predictions had it remaining at sea without further landfall, making it the perfect test subject for the newly minted Project Cirrus, a U.S. government backed project bent on discovering a way to disable deadly hurricanes. The researchers planned to seed the hurricane's clouds with dry ice, hoping that the ice would interact with the clouds and disrupt the cyclone's internal structure, thus uh, weakening it. So on October 13, 1947, a plane flew over the storm and dumped 80 kilograms of dry ice uh, into the storm's uh, swirling clouds. What happened next was a worst-case scenario. Instead of dissipating, the storm furiously uh, swung nearly 130 degrees to the west and smashed into Georgia, where it caused $2 million worth of damage. Threats of lawsuits soon followed, with Georgia residents blaming the government for the devastation. Project Cirrus was all but shut down before it truly began, and, and any research into weather manipulation was repudiated for decades. Again, I don't know the providence of this article. Uh, are you familiar with, with Project Cirrus and this incident? I am. Project Cirrus from 1947 to 1952 was a very, it's in my film as well, and it's um, a very public uh, project at this time. There was also Project Skyfire from the 40s to 60s. There's also the Hurricane Aerosol Microphysics Program, HAMP, um, out of 2009. Operation Cumulus, 1952. Operation Dropkick, 1956 to 57. Operation Big Itch, that one's interesting, where they aerosolize uh, fleas in 1954. Operation White Coat, the California Rainfall Enhancement Program. Project Skywater. Operation Ranch Hand, where they aerosolize uh, Agent Orange. Project Storm Fury, I talked about that. We just talked about Project Cirrus. Um, Operation LAC, large area coverage, where they um, weaponize a bacterial spray over the San Francisco Bay Area to see how far uh, bacteria would, uh, would go and how many people would get sick. But aerosolizing different things um, and manipulating the weather, and that instance that you brought up, it's it's there. You just have to do the digging. I mean, it's it's all about, you know, being a, a researcher, an investigator, being an activist, you kind of have to wear many hats, right? You know, um, as an activist, you start to learn that it's not just one thing. Um, in my world, it became researching electromagnetic frequencies, and all of a sudden, I'm a meteorologist and a fire forensics analyst and all of it. <laughs> you know, you start to wear, you start to learn all these different aspects of it all. And it's just about learning that um, it's not all going to be right there. It's going to be hit, hidden, but also hidden in plain sight. So, for instance, with chemtrails, that's kind of a dirty word. But if you start looking at geoengineering, you, find, you, you start to find different things. But then if you look up solar radiation management or even the CARE program, the Charged Aerosol Release Experiment program out of NASA, then you start to find a whole rabbit hole, right? Or there's, um, I said, solar radiation management and then stratospheric aerosol injections, SAI. They have all these different synonyms with, in the tropospheric aerosol program out of the Department of Energy. We could do a whole show on that. <laughs> like, how is the Department of Energy involved in it? It's because they know that in the future, they're, the dirty energy, coal and oil and gas, is going to be so demonized that geoengineering will come to the forefront and they'll be the ones owning that the tropospheric aerosol program from 2001 when we had 9 11 the biggest distraction ever no one was thinking about uh geoengineering and chemtrails then but they were already um laying the groundwork and coming up with the patents and, and creating the drone technology a lot of these drones are unmanned i mean people ask like how could they get away with this there's they have so many um things that are actually unmanned, that there's not th that many people that could actually blow the whistle. And then everyone that is involved is on a need to know basis, they're compartmentalized, and they're actually told that they're saving the world. 